hello. One of my kids is home today because they uh, didn't have school today. Isn't that great? Uh, last month, it was the same thing when uh, Baldur's Gate came out. But I decided that I'm going to stream anyway because, I don't know, that's how I like to discover these new games. I like to, um, I like to experience them online with friends. So, let's discover the game together, huh? So, I've heard a lot of good things about this game. I've heard that, uh, Bethesda is no longer Bethesda. They don't, uh, release buggy-ass piece of shit games and expect people to fix them for them. Why did you not optimize this game for PC? Uh, we did. It's running great. You may need to upgrade your PC for this game, but it's got a lot of great stuff going on in it, and the fans are responding awesome. That can, uh, that that's true. <laughs> that it's not just a bunch of bought and paid for reviews, because I gotta tell you, man, I've been paying attention to, um, quite a few of these, uh, Bethesda, I don't know what you would call them, they're Bethesda YouTubers, but they all have one thing in common, and that's they just, just never say anything bad about Bethesda or anything that they do. <laughs> Going even so far as to defending Fallout 76, right? All in hopes to curry some favor with, uh, Bethesda so that they too can get early access to the game, you know? We've talked about the game before. You know, not Starfield, but the game of YouTube before. Like, this is the game. You know, get early access, get the views, win, uh, get a get a hot-ass girlfriend, smoke weed every day. You know how it goes. Welcome to the <clears throat> the uh, Galbank Archives. May I see your credentials, please? I've been paying attention to these guys, and it occurs to me that many people, many people, have already decided that this is the best game ever before it's even been played and uh it, it's given me a bad feeling <laughs> it's given me the kind of feeling that i got when i reviewed Baldur's gate 3 which is like that feeling that i'm gonna be the only person who doesn't really like this game <laughs> so we're gonna find out uh whether or not i like this game Garfield. Follow my one simple rule. Hella, what's my one simple rule? Listen, no touching above the waist and no kissing, right? Exactly. Listen to me. Mining's just like any other job. Go steady, go safe, go home with a pocket full of credits at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, just like uh, turning a trick. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Promises, promises. Graphics are pretty impressive, not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Well, okay then. Let's call this one tapped. Why don't you move over to that big vein we looked at? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We move this shit along, please. I feel like I'm on a cart going to Helgen. Hey, you. You're finally awake. Yeah, about that. Oh, we have our first crash. We have our first crash. Very nice. Fucking awesome. <laughs> oh no, it didn't crash. It didn't crash, but now it's completely silent. Mm, wow. Oh my God, what the fuck is going on? So this section has got you going through these tunnels and waiting for these people to finish their little scripted events and shit. And then you come to the end of the tunnel and inside this little room is this gravitational anomaly. And then you mine this thing out of there and you touch it and you get a vision. Now, I just want to ask, does any of this seem familiar to you at all? Like you maybe have seen this in another game before. Like maybe this is like the same exact plot of Mass Effect. Okay. One of the so biggest sci-fi RPGs that have probably ever been released. Screen, I should say. Bold move ripping off that one, man. <laughs> Real bold move. It's uh, It seems pretty rock solid at 60 for me. Which is odd because you guys know I never, ever get the games to run at fucking 60 ever. So, right now, I'm running a single PC 
uh, streaming and playing the game at the same time, and I gotta say, it's running pretty damn smooth for that. Hey, it's character creation. Why didn't they just start with that? Who knows? You know, don't question it, man. It's all good. He's as you're running around Starfield looking like this. So this was my first playthrough of the game, and that's right, I had multiple playthroughs because I had to do this on stream uh, again, all of this stuff over again, because the game does not run well on a hard drive. Now, I know that they said out front that, you know, you need a SSD to run this game smoothly, but I, I did, literally this is the first time I've ever seen a game that became unplayable because I was running it from a hard drive. Oof, man, this game is rough so far. Well, you got the sample. Clients on Yikes! I mean, if you're running this from a hard drive and you don't have an SSD to put this on, don't buy this game. <laughs> Absolutely do not buy this game because you will not be able to run it. You will be in the middle of a firefight and the game will just freeze and it'll freeze for whole seconds. We're talking like four or five whole seconds. It'll freeze and you won't be able to do anything. And it's because it's trying to read stuff off of your hard drive. Like I said, I've never seen a game that is so resource hungry that it needs to constantly be swapping things in and out of memory. But this is like a really big game and I've never seen anybody do things quite the way that they've done it here. I mean, it's unique. It just doesn't feel efficient. God. What is this? <laughs> what is this shit? Ah, uh, so you don't even take off on the planet. Missile. The enemy shields are down, Captain. Ballistic weaponry excels at damaging the hull once shields are offline. Okay. That was, um riveting i am my adrenaline is pumping right now so there's a couple of parts to space exploration that we should probably talk about first off is the exploration part i'm not sure what it was that bethesda was thinking but there's no exploration in your ship you basically are put into a little box and inside of that box are what look like planets and stars and things like that for you to explore, quote unquote. But when you actually take the time to go up to them, you can't land on them, you can't interact with them in any meaningful way. All you can do is go to your menu and land. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't seem like you can fly from planet to planet. Yeah, it doesn't look like you can go from one place to the next. It looks like it's just like... It's pretty lame. And if you take the time to actually go up to the planets, you know, to actually fly up to them, it takes about like seven hours. And by the time you get to them, you'll start to realize that the planet's not actually a planet and you'll fly right through it. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? So you got this space exploration game, right? Where the whole point is for you to explore this almost infinite cosmos and you can't explore it in your ship. The only real way to explore anything is to explore on the ground. Oh, really? You have to do it like that? That's kind of lame, don't you think? I mean, even No Man's Sky let you land on a planet. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, even though Man's Sky lets you land on a fucking planet when it came out. I know that it's not that big a deal, right? Because this is a Bethesda game, and that's what Bethesda games do. You're, you're exploring on the ground with your feet on the ground, not in the air. I get it, but... Are often unpredictable. Bitch, you better get away from me. Wow, that AI is good, huh? That AI is good. He got turned around, didn't know which way to go. <laughs> some, that's some fucking dank ass AI right there. When you're adding the element of space to everything, wouldn't it be nice for you to just be able to, I don't know, fly around the galaxy? 
it, it would be nice to be able to actually fly around and see how all the planets are interconnected, but the game isn't like that. The game just sort of has the illusion of space exploration, unlike a game like No Man's Sky or Star Citizen or Elite Dangerous or any of the space sims that came before it. And I know that this game isn't a space sim, and there's an argument to be made that there's not much to really explore out in space. Like, it's mostly empty, there's like rocks floating around, shit like that, right? So why would you want to spend your time going from one planet to the other? Well, okay then, let's take this argument in a different direction. Let's say you're in Skyrim, right? And the only thing that you get to see are a bunch of rocks on the ground, some trees and mountains on your way to the next town. Then what is the point of making you travel from this place to that place, right? The point is that exploration is the fun part. The getting from point A to point B is the fun part. All the things that you run into on the way there are the things that make the journey worthwhile. When you don't have that journey, and you're just fast traveling from point to point, you lose that entire aspect of the game. So that's why I think space exploration is way more important than people were giving it credit for. And you hear all these guys that are out there on YouTube giving it a complete pass like it's not that important. And, and to me, it's, it feels like a whole section of the game has been gutted. I think that I, like a lot of people, came into this game thinking it was going to be a space exploration kind of game. And it's really not that. So how's the exploration on the ground, right? You know, the, the meat and potatoes of a Bethesda game. I remember when they were talking about this game was gonna be NASA punk. And then they introduced space magic in the first like couple of minutes of the game. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything. And the fact that it's like fast travel to your shit. The fact that it's saying that is telling me there's not much on this planet to really see. It's a mixed bag, really, honestly. You land on a planet, and in that planet you might have three or four different waypoints that you can discover, right? So let's say you made a custom landing spot, and in that custom landing spot, a terrain is generated for you, and four random POIs appear on the map. Those POIs can be anything. I've, yeah, I don't feel like there's anything on these planets. They just seem to be pretty barren. I had ran into three different planets, and all three different planets that I landed on had nothing but, like, really empty-feeling POIs, like, like those little floating rocks and stuff, like, you would run into that ruined site, like, three or four times on a planet, and then you'd run into a colony, but it's just, like, three people in a randomly generated house who don't say anything to you, don't have conversations, have no interesting interactions to be had with them. And then occasionally you might find an actual dungeon to explore. Dude, is there really just nothing in here? It's just a room, that's it? That's really it? It was just a room? the fuck out of here. There's no way. I gotta be missing something. It's just a fucking room. Wow, okay. It's like literally less than zero reason to have come in this room. I thought it was gonna be one of those neat little, uh, what do you call them? Side quests that, uh, Bethesda likes to do. But, uh, nah. Oh my god, this, the menu system is just ish. What the fuck? I don't think they finished this area too well. This does not seem like a finished area. <laughs> that terrain, that terrain, look at that. Look at that terrain. What caused that, do you think? What caused that terrain, do you think? And those dungeons are admittedly fun when you get to do them, but they're completely disconnected from the main story uh, side quests, all of it. They're just completely disconnected. They're just randomly generated and in there. And because they're randomly generated, like a lot of them end up feeling almost exactly the same. Like you can actually pick out interesting terrain that you thought was like environmental storytelling, 
only for them to repeat that terrain and that geometry over and over again in mission after mission after mission. Even, even out of missions, you see it repeated. But just like Fallout 4 before it, it has a lot of exploration that you could do on ground and it is fun, admittedly. I mean, there were times when I actually had fun with the game. The problem is, I was trying to do the main story. And that's a real big problem. Hello everyone, it's me again. I'm gonna try and start a new game. Um, I think me and the game maybe got off to a bad start. And I do believe that I have managed to, um, yeah, totally. to get rid of all the stuttering and bullshit. And the way I did that was by installing everything to the SSD, which... And, you know, let's be honest. Uh, God, I hope that's not, like, that's a new trend. Alright, we need some fuzzy-ass eyebrows. We need some of them Polly Walnuts eyebrows. I don't know if they're gonna have his nose. He has a very unique nose. Actually pretty close. That one's actually pretty fucking close. I'm getting there. I'm getting a little close. <laughs> do you have any more old man necks? Yeah, they do. That's an old man neck if I ever saw it. It's not quite there, it's close though. <laughs> Almost got Henry Rollins. I'll turn you into me. Constellation contact. Whoa! Whoa! Dynamic, bro! Look at that! Wow! Wow, look at that! Physics! Just Let's watch her walk out. <gasps> wow! So dynamic! <laughs> yeah, but come on! Exploring space? <laughs> Who does that anymore? Ain't the space we've already got complicated enough? I think the real question Not is, today, how many man. people are still flat earthers? All right, Dusty. I was reading somewhere that, like, you can steal people's ships and sell them, but they're not worth much. And I was just thinking, like, what kind of sense does that make? A ship is not worth much money. Like, look at all the materials that go into making a ship. That ship's worth some fucking money. That's like those people that buy cars for like a hundred dollars. It's like the fucking scrap metal is worth more than a hundred dollars. Come on, open up. Where you think you're going? Where you think you're going? Where you think you're going? Nowhere, that's right. Good job. Oh. That was some fine work on the pressure. You Wasn't much pressure, to be honest, man. That means you saw it. The visions. You're coming with me to Constellation. You're part of this now. Who says, motherfucker? How about I stay and I send your Dusty here in my place? I, 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 I know, I know, but he's not some miner anymore, Lynn. Soon as he touched that rock, something changed. Don't tell me you can't feel it. Fine. Don't tell me you can't feel what? Get out of here, Dusty. You're on to bigger things. <laughs> so, like, I don't get a choice. I can't just say, I'm gonna stay here and mine. What if I don't want to go? Now that we've been attacked, oh, we've got to pack up and move on. Argos will come for the rest of us. You get going. No way, not my job. Don't you get it? You don't have a job here anymore. You're with those explorers now. What the fuck, man? Like or not. Just I don't get to say? <laughs> figure out what happened to you when you touched that rock. I don't want to find out what happened to me when I touched that rock. I'd rather just let it go. Get him to the lodge. No deviations. It's like when you feel your balls and you got a little bit of a lump there and you're like, man, I don't know if I should go to the doctor or not about this. Very <laughs> well. I'm not sure if I want to find out what's actually wrong with me. It's weird, I feel like I'm playing Outer Worlds. If you're gonna make me fast travel every fucking where, you'd think that you'd make it a little easier to fast travel instead of making me sit through three fucking loading screens to do it. But think about how disjointed this game is. You start off as a miner who finds an artifact, and because they find an artifact, a stranger just automatically trusts you with his spaceship. And then you get attacked by some guys, and you decide that you're gonna land on the planet where those guys are, are located. 
have a fucking uh, a gunfight with them and then somehow negotiate them stopping trying to kill you after you've killed everybody in the place. Um, the premise is ridiculous. So that we're clear on what the story is up to now, you start off as a miner, you touch an artifact, it knocks you unconscious, you have a vision, and bear it knowing that you had this vision and you were the one that touched the artifact, somehow automatically trust you to take his ship back to Constellation with this very, very valuable artifact. And they say something about the ship had some sort of lock on it that would prevent you from just running off with it, but it still doesn't make any sense on its face. Because anything could happen from going from that mining moon to Constellation. I could have blew the damn ship up. I could have gotten killed by the pirates. I could have drove the goddamn thing right into a mountain. How does he know that I know how to fly a, a spaceship? I, I, sh I, I, I'm a miner. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, am I qualified to fly a ship? I don't know. But it's like all those little details, right, that you could just easily hand wave away. Those little details really contribute to your immersion in the game. And when those little details are a little bit off, even if they justify it somehow by retconning something that happened or just by explaining it, it still it still takes away a little bit of the believability of the world and thus takes you out of it. This direction. Bitch die. What are you? Trilobite? Fuck you die. I'm the one from his dreams. I'm the chosen one. I'm the one who can wield space magic. Let's get out of this. Because you can't switch weapons when you're scanning for some reason. Which I think is, uh, dumb as shit, man. The game is full of these weird limitations, these, like, weird artificial limitations, right? It's like, when you have your scanner open, you can't switch weapons. But it gets worse than that. You actually can't even interact with things while you're in your scanner because your key gets remapped to, to actually scanning things instead of interacting with things. So, like, you might be in scan mode trying to dock with a station, but you can't dock with the station because you have your scanner open, and you'd have no way of knowing that because the UI doesn't look significantly different or different enough in order to trigger that immediately in your brain, so you'd have to, like, take a little while, process what's going on, and then realize, oh, I have my scanner open, and then close it, right? But it's so clunky. You should be able to interact, do whatever you want, shoot, fire, move, shit, you know, squat down, take a drink out of a vodka bottle. You should be able to do whatever the hell you want while you're in your scanner. I don't know why you would limit it. It doesn't make any sense. Like I would have my scanner open all the time interacting with things if I could because it's literally the best way to find what's in the room with you because it highlights everything in this like blue ring, which I think is actually really a really good feature of the game, but it's underutilized because I have to keep it down because I have to interact with items. And if I'm interacting with items, I can't have the scanner up. Do you see the problem? Then there's the graphics settings. It's so ridiculous. I have to play in 1080p because the game can be quite a resource hog at 1440p. But my monitor is 1440p native. So what ends up happening is that um, when I go to adjust my display, I can't because it's only borderless full screen or windowed mode. So you have two options, windowed mode or borderless full screen. I fucking hate it. This isn't the first game to do it, but it's the start of a trend that I fucking hate. You know what I'm saying? So. What I end up having to do is go into my monitor settings and change the monitor to 1080p so that I can have it on borderless full screen and not have it play on 1440p because 1440p is a bit much for this computer to be able to fucking render everything. So it's just it's just bad, man. I'm sorry. Come on, swing your hands, swing your hands. There you go. Bitch, fuck you. Come on, swing your fucking hands, you unresponsive game, you. Well, guys, it feels like I'm playing a Bethesda game. The melee combat is lackluster. The AI is all right. It's got all the Bethesda things. Explore, loot, and shoot.
After all the pirate assholes are killed, then we actually get to the main story. And in order to get the main story going, we gotta land at New Atlantis. And this is where you're gonna start to notice the load screens. The absolute overabundance of load screens. I counted seven load screens in order to go from the planet that I was on to space, to New Atlantis's space, to the planet that New Atlantis is on, to getting off of this ship, to then using the bus to get from one place to the next, and then loading into the building that the Constellation Group is actually in. Seven load screens. That's a bit too many fucking load screens. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. Would you care to tell us what happened to our friend? Why you're here and he isn't? All statements made have been factual. Uh, this is just typical. Barrett hands over our ship and our robot to some random employee of that discount mining outfit he uses. So it seems that Barrett does this all the time. Like he's always giving away his ship to people because as soon as you tell them that he did this, they're like, oh, that, that Barrett dag nabbit that that silly barrett he's always doing things like this and i was like really seems like a really unreliable person to have on your team so then they tell you that you're they're looking for these artifacts and they're not sure quite sure what it's going to do when they find all the pieces but they're investing a whole lot of money into it because well look at it it's basically magic right so they found a bunch of locations that you need to go and search as to what they are what they're building well You'll be part of solving that puzzle now. You're going to trust someone you barely know that you just met with a task this important. Uh, okay, cool. So you go to those places and the way that these missions usually work is that you'll have to infiltrate either like a mining operation, a cave or or an office building. Literally just came to this planet just to talk to this guy. Eh? Who the fuck y'all talking to? Why do y'all look alike? Y'all look like three sisters that got different haircuts. And when you're in there, you'll find a cave that leads to one of the artifacts. But it, typically what you're doing is you're just running through these places, shooting up pirates or crimson fleet people or eclipse or spacers and one of the four factions in the game and once you get to the end you get your artifact you come back you go through all those load screens again you talk the constellation they take the artifact from you and then you go out to do it all over again and you do this for a while and then you come to a certain point where they want you to investigate some gravitational anomalies on some planets so you go there and you investigate and what you find is that there's these <laughs> I have to take a minute to really just like have you soak in how 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 stupid this is but when you get there there will be a large circle in the middle of a room and in that room are these little spirals of light that will spawn you're supposed to fly into the spirals of light the little circles will start to spin faster and once they spin up they'll have an orgasm and then you can fly through them and get your space magic right and once you discover the first power they have you go three more times to do the exact same thing and this wouldn't be a bad thing if there was actually something to do on these planets when you go to them but there really isn't because they're usually on barren planets with nothing to them. You basically, you go to the planet, you land on the planet, you go out and you walk to the location that you're supposed to walk to, and then when you get there, you go inside the building, do the little mini game, get your power, and leave and go back and find more places to go to get more powers. And you do that over and over again for what feels like the better part of like five hours. So when people tell you that this game gets better the more you play it, they're not wrong because most people are gonna mainline the story at first until they get bored of it. And this is about the time that I got bored of the game because I was going through the main story pretty consistently. And for a long time, it was just these boring ass missions with nothing to them. Then in around the 10 to 12 hour mark, you hit one of the actual cool missions on Neon. Once you get the Neon, the game really picks up and starts to actually be fun. But before that, it is a boring, boring ass slog. And my question is this, 
How much time is an appropriate amount of time to make a player wait to enjoy the product that they bought? How long? Two hours? Three hours? 12 hours? 20 hours? You know, how many hours am I supposed to put into a game before my opinion is validated in the community? Well, here's the fucking truth of it. It'll never be validated. You'll never get to a point where people who enjoy the game will ever be uh, appreciative of your opinion because your opinion is not like theirs. They got a different experience out of it. And a lot of people are having a lot of fun with this game. But if you're like me, and you've seen all this kind of stuff before, you've played the open world games, you've been playing open world games your whole life, this game isn't doing anything new. And you might end up, like me, uh, fairly underwhelmed by the game. Still having a good time, but pretty underwhelmed by it. I mean, essentially, I called this out a while ago before the game even came out, because I saw some screenshots, and I was like, hmm, yeah, this looks like it's gonna be Fallout 4 in space. And that's essentially what it is. It's the same loot, shoot, and explore formula from Fallout 4 in space. That's it. That's basically it. If you like Fallout 4 a lot, you're probably going to love this game. Man, this is boring. <laughs> It was really, really fucking boring. This game likes to get in the way of your fun a lot. Whether it's the UI just not having enough information displayed on it, or just weird decisions that Bethesda made, this game gets in your way a lot. Gonna play another little bit of Starfield, going to engage in the exploration loop a little bit. Gonna engage in the um, loot shoot uh, portion of the game. But in order to do that, we're gonna need ammo. We're gonna need all of the ammo that everyone has. I will say, just sort of jetpacking around in the geometry the way you're not supposed to. Pretty fun. Yeah, I dig it. It starts off pretty shitty when you're not even able to because of the perks. But the moment you start opening up perks, the game starts getting good. It's it's really weird that they locked so many things behind the skill progression system because that makes the game very slow, right? It makes progression and the overall game feel feel very, very slow. Let's concentrate on what we need to do. We need a shitload of med packs. We need a shitload of ammo. So let's go to the residential district, not the commercial district. I don't know who told you to go to the commercial district to do commercial shopping, but you actually need to go to the residential district. And no matter how long I've played this game, I still do not know where shit is in this game. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, <laughs> this is gonna suck. This is gonna be the most boring part of the game. I'm really sorry, but 500 rounds, I'll buy all of it, hell yeah. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit here. <laughs> and we're gonna pass the time. Polly Walnuts is gonna pass the time. 48 whole hours he's going to sit. They could have made this go a little faster. Do you know what I mean? This is stupid. <laughs> you, oh my God. You made it so that the ammo is so scarce. So it's like, you had to know that people were going to sit and wait. Okay, so we've, we need this. So we need all of your ammo. Hello there, Strat, having fun? Um, uh, not yet. <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping that once I get all my ammo and I get all my supplies, like, cause what I need here is to then go from this store to another store to go get med, med kits. And that's gonna take Fuck, man, that's gonna take fucking forever, dog. Got all kinds of drugs. He got the drugs. This game has a lot of systems. There's a crafting system for your weapons. There's a crafting system for your ship. Now, the crafting system for your ship, though, it's uh, interesting, but the UI is an absolute mess and there's just a lot of quality of life stuff that's missing from it so uh 
Why would I care about... What is this? The ship cannot be finalized due to errors in flight check. The ship has some weapons that must be assigned to a group. How do you assign them to groups? Can't figure out how to assign these bitches to groups. <laughs> you know what I mean? This shouldn't be this hard, man. Press the start button and press RB to tab over to weapons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's so fucking stupid. Oh, man. Oh, I would have never figured that out, man. I never would have figured that the fuck out. But, okay. I really do not know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> I really do not know what the fuck I'm doing. Press A without a part being selected. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're probably, you're probably wondering why I'm fucking laughing. There's like... There's like eight fucking buttons on this controller. Why did they... Play check. Ship has unattached modules. Uh, nah, it fucking don't, man. It really don't. How am I supposed to figure out which ones are unattached? Nope, still saying it, motherfucker. Yeah, why wouldn't it, exactly, why wouldn't it highlight the error? Because I'm not seeing it anywhere on the fucking screen, anywhere. Turns out what you're supposed to do is attach each module to those little blue rings that appear on the screen. But the thing is, when you pick up an item to actually attach it to one of those circles, some of the circles disappear. And there's no rhyme or reason as to why they do that. Like, why can't I attach this laser to this piece of equipment? There's no logical reason to it. It just is the way it is, right? And it's pretty unintuitive the first time you get into it. But the second time you get into it, eh, you know, it's a little better and you learn a little bit more each time you play it. It's just that I feel like the UI should be teaching you a lot more than it does. And it sort of makes the whole process of learning this stuff a little more intimidating for a first time player. I wanted to do some side questing, right? So I kind of need to go find some side quests. So let's go do that. Now we come to side questing and uh, there's a lot here and I've heard good things about side quests, but I, I did not have the same experience as other people had because, well, I'm looking at the game with a critical eye and uh, there's a lot of, just from a critical standpoint, a lot of problems here and a lot of it stems from combat. Take the elevator down to the Vanguard orientation hall. You can get started at any of the registration terminals. The system will walk you through the rest. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever, bro. Whatever. Welcome, Polly Walnuts. Please proceed through the orientation hall to the examination chamber. Content warning ahead. Uh, I'm going to be doing some spoilers here for the UC Vanguard missions. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, well, now would be the time to eject yourself out of this video. And while these are light spoilers, I mean, I don't really spoil the story or anything. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up because I know some of you are really looking forward to this game and I don't want to ruin it for you. Humanity learned the Earth's magnetosphere would collapse sometime in the next half century. No. To provide all their citizens with opportunity, security. <laughs> no gods only, Todd. And don't care. Don't care. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I'm good. I'm good. I'm gonna skip all of this. Oh no, look at that guy. Whoa, he's crazy. Keep on going. Keep on going. I'm sure at some point, if I ever play this game again, I'll probably sit down and listen to all that stuff, but not today is not that day. The Vanguard mission has some really cool things going on about it, you know, the whole opening with the story of basically the entire game uh, done through little kiosks that you can interact with in the lobby. Pretty cool. Then there's the simulation where you do a wave-based shoot-em-up kind of thing to qualify to be a Vanguard. 
Shouldn't they have done this enter simulation uh, shit? Shouldn't they have done this simulation before they gave me my own ship? This feels like this is supposed to be a tutorial. Come on, fucking lock onto this dick. Woo! We got through, bros. We got through, bros. And I think it's quite honestly like a huge step up from Bethesda's other games here because usually when you join a faction in one of their games, all it's all you have to do is just find the guy who's the lead and say, I want to join, and he go, okay, cool, come on in. No background check, no nothing. They just let you in. Anybody can become the leader of the Mages Guild, even the leader of the Thieves Guild, right? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Well, with this system, you can still join any faction that you want, but when you do join the faction, it really does feel, at least in the UC Vanguard uh, case, it really does feel like you're actually joining an organization and that you have to qualify to actually become a part of the organization. It's a really nice touch. I really like it. And what I've got is comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plant on Tau City 2. Sounds like they'd barely gotten set up when their communications died. Let me guess. There's some people in there shooting up the place. So the story has you going to this planet where there's a colony and communications have gone down and you're there to investigate what happened. Oh, there's a big ass ship right here. Are you serious? Dude, I'm stealing this ship. Oh, come on. Bullshit. Not gonna let me steal this ship. That's fucking bullshit, dude. Why even have it here then? Just don't even have it here if you're not gonna let me steal it. Cause you know that's what I'm gonna try and do. Got some blood in the toilet. That's like a uh, Wendy's bathroom. Y'all never been to a Wendy's bathroom? Man, there is always blood everywhere. I don't understand what's going on at the Wendy's I go to, but man, we're actually getting some, uh, we're getting some, uh, what do you call that? Some environmental storytelling. Huh? When you get there, everybody's dead in the most bloody way possible. It looks like somebody just came in here and dome pieced everybody. And then you find one lone survivor. She tells you that everybody died because of a creature called a terror morph. This section acts as a nice little horror section, a nice little break from action. Trackers reading green. You go in there and you're being stalked by this creature and you got to get all the turrets up in time before it finds you and so on and so on. And there's a nice little radar that is constantly clicking off in the background telling you how close and how far away it is. And it's a really nice setup. The only problem is the AI screws it all up. It's on the move. I don't give a fuck, man. Where are you at? Where'd he go? Uh, what just happened just now? Oh yeah, he's got a lot of hit points. Come on, jump. I bet he can't get through. A door? Oh shit. What the fuck is that? What was that exactly? It like shot through the floor or some shit. Or like there's scripted events where they're supposed to, like things are supposed to explode when it comes around. Now notice that while I'm in the midst of this heart pounding action, you know, the music's going, the mood is set, the terror morph is right there. I'm talking about how screwy things are instead of being immersed into this, what's supposed to be a horrifying event. When somebody says that their immersion is broken by a bug, this is what they mean. 
this is weirdness, not necessarily a bug, but weirdness taking me out of this otherwise really well-constructed event. Like, it feels like this um, was supposed to be a lot more scary than it is because I'm too busy laughing at all the, <laughs> the janky shit. And this is why, this is why you buy every bit of ammo that you can get because these guys are bullet spongy because the only reason they're difficult is because they take a fucking like three whole clips to take down, not because they're difficult enemies because like look at how easily you can cheese their fucking AI. This was a unique and interesting encounter that they had proposed that they had put together, but it completely fell apart because the aliens AI could not keep up with me. Now, if this was a one-off thing, I could kind of accept it, but it definitely happened more than once with the same enemy. Oh my God, dummy. Why did you get in the way? What a fucking dumbass. Wow, this is really difficult, man. Uh, I'm really scared of this guy. happened is I just uh, stood behind some cover and shot the guy until he died. So the combat really lets this section down and basically ruins what could have been a really, really great mission and really a great series of missions. Once you're inside, you can make your move. If you're quick, I think you can take them out before they have a chance to respond. But you'll have to shoot to kill. I always shoot to kill. Back door. I don't shoot the wound. This key should unlock it. Okay. Now, um, just so that y'all know, just so that y'all know, um, this is my first time, uh, shooting a gun in a hostage situation. So if these things go bad, I'm sorry, but, um, I tried my best. This is going to be clean and simple and smooth. Oh, hey guys, what's up? Oh shit, fuck, oh, 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 oh no, my gun, my gun's just going off, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do, your gun's just going off, just chill, chill, get out of here, go, run, fuck out of here, whoops, I can't stop shooting, stop, what's happening, the gun won't stop, maybe I should just point away from him, okay, it stopped now, okay. I've heard some people call this game an MSIM. Thank you so much. Thank you for what, shooting you? I shot the hell out of both of you guys. Um, I heard them say this in earnest because there are some systems in this game that interact with one another in a very MSIM-y kind of way, but when I think of MSIM, 
I don't think of the simulation so much as I think of the immersion, right? M sim is an immersive sim, right? Immersion is key to the simulation being convincing, right? And I don't know how you can have a game that is immersive when you pump a hundred bullets into a person, they fall down, but don't die. Important NPCs are like the bane of Bethesda games. Dude, what the hell are you doing? Hey, why are you shooting me, asshole? Now, The Outer Worlds, a game that I think is an inferior game in almost every way to this game, uh, they figured out how to make it so that you could kill everyone in the town and kill everyone that you meet and still have the game continue on. I don't know how a company as big as Bethesda with all the Microsoft money behind them can't figure it out after all this time. Still don't understand why I'm uh, getting attacked by security. I didn't, it's not like I killed anybody. I can't kill anybody. So of course, after you finish this mission, if you ended up killing the hostages for whatever reason, you know, call it complete mental breakdown or psychosis. Let's say you killed everybody in there or you tried at least to kill everyone. As soon as you leave, the sheriff and all of his men are going to try and kill you because there's always a witness. There's always a survivor. Without any witnesses, the sheriff would have no way of knowing if you shot them or if the Shaw Gang shot them. You can't kill everybody in there. One of them's at least marked an important NPC. So if you try to kill him, he's not going to die. He's the toughest guy in the universe. He He's tougher than 20,000 Terramorphs. We need to give this guy some armor, a fucking weapon, and send him out on the front line. This guy could take out every fucking Terramorph on the fucking universe and uh, by himself single-handedly with just a stick oh shit Cora how you doing whoops I am at your service, Captain. domed she doesn't seem affected by it <laughs> there's just no change in her expression at all it's just tanking them hits how you doing babe what can I help you with? <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> Look at her fucking face. The game honestly limits you a lot. It limits you in how you can express yourself through the gameplay because evil playthroughs really aren't even possible because number one, you can't kill half of the fucking people in the game. And number two, there aren't really any evil options in the game. I mean, you can play as a pirate, but you don't actually get to be evil. You you might do some things that you might think are evil, but that's a part of the quest that you're on. You can't become a pirate and then just like decide to become Robin Hood. So I gotta ask, in like what way is this a role-playing game? What role are you playing? Is the role simply just the choice of, I'm gonna hit people with my fists, I'm gonna hit people with knives, or I'm gonna hit people with bullets? If that's the only choice that is present in the game that is meaningful in any sort of way, then in what way is this a role-playing game? Stay safe, okay? I always wear a condom. I don't know what you're talking about. I've occasionally had my doubts about conservation as an investment. <laughs> Now. <laughs> He's just going back to me. He's just going back. Yeah. No one else. Hey, many <laughs> more. He's got to put away the clipboard first. Like, a lot of people just kind of brush this aside and be like, well, yeah, you know, sometimes you just can't kill everybody, okay? It's okay, you don't have to kill everybody. But it's like, I want to kill certain people. There are certain people I want to kill, and I fucking can't. It was the same problem that we had in Skyrim. We had the same problem in Skyrim as the same problem that we had in Fallout 4, and it's the same problem we have now. I mean, all these years later, and no progress in this regard, it really does hamper your ability to roleplay the game. And the reason I'm doing this is because Cyberpunk caught a lot of shit for having lackluster AI, right? But even Cyberpunk, when you pointed a gun at someone, they'd stop and put their hands up because they're frozen in place because, you know, that's what happens when a gun gets pointed in your face. You might freeze up, right? Or you might pull a gun on the guy and try to start shooting him, you know? But mostly you're gonna put your hands up right and 
the only time they run away is when you fire off a warning shot and then they'll run away. In fact, everyone around you will run away. In this game, that doesn't happen. <laughs> All right, so we're in a residential district and uh, I I'm just gonna, you know, start pointing my gun at people and see uh, if they react or uh, do anything when I do that. So, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Put your hands up. <laughs> Put your hands up. Hi, cop. Hey, how you doing? Put your hands up. Come on, come on. How about you? How about you? Do you have anything to say about this? No? Nothing. Alrighty then. What about you guys? What about you guys, huh? Let's see if we fire a shot here. Sounds like if these guys will um, run away. Oh, no, he just got tired of standing there. How about you? What the f- What?! I wasn't even pointing at him! I wasn't even pointing at the guy! What the fuck? Okay. And they don't do anything when you shoot near their head. Right? They just stand there. <laughs> they just stand there looking bored like nothing happened. I can fire shots. I can fire shots at this cop's head. Right, right next to him. Right next to his ear. Look at that. Right next to his fucking ear. And he won't do a damn thing. He'll just stand there. Look, I'm gonna shoot at this cop's feet. <laughs> Get going! Yeah. So they don't do anything. The only time they'll do something is when you shoot somebody. Right? Yeah. Then they'll do something. But... They won't do anything preventative <laughs> with the madman who's running around discharging a weapon in public. Does that seem immersive to you? I don't know, it doesn't seem immersive to me. Is this a good game? Man, that's a really loaded question. That's a really hard question to answer. Um, I feel like it's an entertaining game at times. There's times where it's very entertaining and I'm able to lose myself in the game. And then there's other times where it's very slow there's a lot of dialogue that sort of just kind of goes on for what feels like forever. There's no brevity in the dialogue at all. There's no fucking chill. It's a, it's like 100 miles per hour spouting exposition sometimes. The missions themselves, it's also a rather um, mixed bag. As I've pointed out here, there are some missions that are very good, and then there are other missions that are pretty piss poor um the main mission being chiefly among them and a lot of people use the excuse that well it's the main story mission nobody ever does the main story mission in bethesda games and it's like yeah but i do <laughs> i play every single main story mission in a bethesda game i've played through all of them I like the games for those reasons. I like to play the main story and then I like to fuck around and become the guild leader of every guild. That's the order in which I play these games. Other people may differ, but I do it that way. So my natural instinct was to gravitate towards the main mission and I think that really soured me, honestly, because the main mission is really just that bad. It is slow boring and it doesn't ever seem to get where it's trying to go uh, especially before it loses your attention and you decide to go side questing and dicking around in uh, you know empty space um, and then you've got like the procedural generation and you would think that like procedural generation would give you just this this wealth of content that you could just never get through but the procedurally generated planets that I've been on I, I've in total, I think I've been to like maybe seven or eight, maybe ten, and each one had sort of the same layout. You go into a little square, you know, map, and it's populated with a bunch of different points of interest, and sometimes you get interesting points of interest, and what I mean by they're interesting the first time you see them, but then you see them a hundred more times, and it's like, okay, this was, this was uninteresting the second time I saw it. And then you get like these little bases or outposts where you have to go in and kill a bunch of Eclipse or go and kill a bunch of pirates. And 
that's it. That's really the extent of the content in the procedurally generated planets. And how quickly can that stuff get boring? So the main thing that the main selling point of the game, this procedurally generated world or universe, as it were, uh, it's kind of not a, a, a real selling point once you start playing it because it doesn't feel like what you're expecting um, or what you're most likely expecting. Overall, I would say that it's a very decent game. Uh, if you like Fallout 4, you will like this game. That's There's no doubt in my mind. If you really got into like base building in Fallout 4, this is probably going to be the game for you. The, uh, the next game I'm going to be looking at is Cyberpunk and its DLC. Uh, mainly going to be looking at the changes from the most recent patch to 2.0 and then the difference in quality from the main story to the DLC. So it should be fun. Come and check it out. And as always, it's been fun. This has been a rant from Strategy, and now that you heard it, go play some games. I asked you for your most brain dead takes on Twitter, and this is what you had to say. Gunmetal of YouTube fame says, it's an outright asshole take, but I hope the mod scene dies after they're done fixing the basics. The game is so ludicrously broken that there's no way to improve on it past that, short of a top to bottom overhaul of the entire project. David Zemanski says it needs more space bikinis, and uh, I gotta agree, man. Uh, I didn't see one uh, pair of fake breasts or a big fat ass in the entire universe, and I gotta say, I noticed its absence. YouTuber I finished a video game says space just isn't as cool as a magic fantasy land. And uh, yeah, I would say that I agree with that. Uh, I think though the reason is, is that Magic Fantasyland was one big cohesive map and Spaceland is just a bunch of disconnected maps. So I think I agree with you on that. Dylan Rogers from New Blood says, it needs a 10 penny station where I can blow up a settled planet. Fatal Banana says, the game is so segmented it feels like an early MMO where everything is instance to hell. Going from place to place reminded me of the original Guild Wars. Damn, good callback. Fucking Guild Wars, damn. It does kind of feel like that, honestly. Like a bunch of maps that are just disconnected from the overall the overworld map. I, it, I think I agree with you on that. Remember, I said these are the most brain dead takes, and I'm agreeing with most of them. <laughs> Dante Afton says 90% of people who were hyped for Starfield's release were only hyped for Starfield's release because it meant that Bethesda would start working on Elder Scrolls V. Shit. <laughs> that says Elder Scrolls 6. I'm a fucking idiot. All right, I, I can't read Roman numerals, apparently. Richard Pendant says, seven years for a seven out of 10 game. <laughs> That's one year for each point. Squirrely Han says, for a deeply unhorny game, they gave Sarah a great ass. <laughs> yes, they did. They gave her one hell of a pooper, man. She has got a dump truck. Baby, baby, I need you. And Agus Aran says, I want motorcycles to explore the planets. I want a Mako to explore the planets, okay? I'm right there with you, buddy. 